Hi, I'm Dawn Clarity. I am a breast cancer survivor. Um, my story starts back actually in December of 2020. I went for some follow-up blood work and hadn't had a mammogram in three to five years. And my doctor says, when we do them here, you wanna go downstairs, go ahead and do it. And I was like, sure. So go downstairs, she does it on vacation in January. I get a phone call that I need a follow-up, which really did not shock me because I've always had to have second mammograms because I have dense breasts. Didn't think a thing about it. Get there. Um, I'm supposed to have my follow-up mammogram on February 1st, 2021. That morning, my office burned to the ground at 6.15 in the morning. So I am scrambling trying to get networks up and everything, run out the house, forget my disc. I get there and they're like, we can't do it without your disc. And I'm like, okay, this is what's going on. And they're like, oh, we'll reschedule you for Thursday. 72 hours of no sleep trying to get networks up. I go for my second mammogram. I walk in, they have the little computer sitting there and I look over and I'm like, oh, that's what I'm here for, huh? It was about the size of a quarter. So she does my second mammogram. They stick me in this closet. So that's what it felt like. And you sit there for, you know, 30, 40 minutes while they wait for the radiologist to read your stuff. And then they take me into another room and they do an ultrasound. And he's, you know, definitely there's something there. And so I took a picture of the ultrasound. So I had that on my phone and I'm still okay. I mean, I get to the car, I'm in tears. First time I cried. And it was mostly, I think, stress. It wasn't so much that I was worried at that point. Well, I already knew who I wanted to see because I'd known Dr. Brackett for over 20 years. Our older daughters danced together. So I go to his office on Monday and I go by myself because I'm thinking, who's gonna tell me I have cancer when they're doing my biopsy? You know, they gotta send it off. So I'm by myself, I go in and we're talking about the girls, talking about, you know, how long it's been and everything. And he does it and he looks me dead in the eye while I'm still laying there and says, well, from my experience, you definitely have cancer. And I, my eyes just said it all because I had a mask on. We're still wearing masks. And he just looks at me and he says, don't worry, I've got you. And he pokes me in the forehead and I'm like, okay. So I hold it together while I'm in there. They set up my next appointment, which is to give me my results. I get in the car and I am just bawling, texting my friends going, you know, it's definite, I've got it. And um, I'm driving down the road and a really good friend of mine who had just gone through breast cancer calls me. So I suck it up and she, I get on the phone with her and she's like, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. She said, don't. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And I'm just bawling my eyes out. And um, so I go and I meet her for lunch. And that was the last time I had a tear until it was all over. Um, at that point, it was what it was. I go for my follow-up for him to tell me exactly what I had, and I was triple positive. I carried the ATM gene, which is one of the newer ones that's not as familiar as the bracket genes that everybody knows about. I did do the genetic testing, and I do carry the gene, and my kids have a 50% chance of having the gene as well. It does not mean they'll get it. It just means they have a chance of carrying the gene. But I'm sitting in his office, and he's telling me, you know, the plan. You know, we're going to do chemo, we're going to do radiation, um, how many weeks of this, how many weeks of that. And he tells me they're just going to go in and they're going to take it out. Because one thing that's changed over the years, my mom had breast cancer, my grandmother had breast cancer, and both had mastectomies. And so I went into this appointment thinking I was getting a tummy tuck and a boob job, that they were taking them off and, and we were done. And he says they don't do that anymore, that they found that the percentage of people surviving is greater without it. So that was something I was just, you know, kind of in awe about. But he laughed at me when I told him that, you know, I thought I was getting a tummy tuck and a boot job. So, you know, from there on out, I always went into my appointments expecting the worst. And because I expected the worst, anything they gave me was better. But I was one of the lucky ones. I mean, I, I posted this all over Facebook. I did TikToks telling people what I was going through and what I was doing to try to prevent having any of the side effects and things. I was never nauseated, I was never sick. I drove myself to appointments and those were things that over 50% of the people that were in there with me couldn't say. 
I would go to sleep during my chemo treatments specifically just to not watch the people throwing up in the, the chairs near me, you know, watching them moan in pain because they hurt from head to toe. Um, I would leave, I'd go home. My days were fine. Um, I went through 12 weeks of chemo. I did Taxol, Herceptin, and then little cocktail that they give you ahead of time. My downfall was they told me to eat what I wanted to eat, so I ate what I wanted to eat. <laughs> Should have done that. Um, when I finished chemo, I never lost all my hair. Um, it got really, really thin. It got, it grew at the same time. I went in for like my third or fourth visit with uh, Dr. Myers, and she walks in the door and goes, you've got hair. I said, yeah, and you told me I wasn't gonna have to shave my legs, but guess what? I'm still having to shave my legs. You know, things like that, they just kept me going. My friends, I had friends from across country that had no idea I had breast cancer call me up and say, I just heard you on our prayer list. People don't like social media, but I'm gonna tell you something, it has a, it has a place. And I had so many people just praying for me through all this. And it was a feeling that you just could not imagine. Just to know that that many people that didn't even know you were praying that you survived this. And I was one of the lucky ones. I never had any side effects whatsoever. I, I worked during my, my time I had my surgery. You know, with the office burning, we had charges we needed to put in. I put them in. Um, I showed up for work every day. I took care of my husband who had a pancreatitis attack right in the middle of my chemo. I did, um, I think it was about eight, 10 weeks of radiation, not the first burn until my last radiation treatment. And it literally took one of my scars away. And I have two scars. Um, everything went great. Those scars are my battle wounds, my survival wounds. My next time crying, was my last day of radiation. And I woke up that morning and could not stop because it was over. I could finally say it was done. Now I did have several months left of um, Herceptin infusions that I had to do, which helps kill the estrogen in my body because the estrogen is what actually causes my cancer. And my cancer will come back. It's just a matter of trying to keep it at bay so that it doesn't come back either in my lifetime or at least at a point that it's okay, it's time to go. But that's my story.